So day seven, something's happened. Something's happened that's ruined my solitude. Look. Have a look. So I had seven days though, so I, I can't be too bad, but um, we got, we got these guys in the house. Look, say hi. Batman. Yeah, uh, a skinhead. A racist. He's not really, he's a good guy. <laughs> if one thinks he's, he's a good guy. Oh, but I had to have a, a CCTV camera, so my solitude for seven days lasted, but I forgot about the CCTV camera, guys. So I've had some human contact, and this guy here as well. Uh, they've ruined my solitude, but what can I do? Seven days is fine. Another racist. Yeah. yeah nice. <laughs> he's, he's half Jewish. Everyone thinks everyone's racist nowadays. Uh, so we'll go in the garden, we'll talk. Um, uh, we'll condemn these. Can everyone write really bad comments about how they ruined my solitude and uh, how they should be sent to. What say? They could be. The gulag. We're going to send you to the gulag. To the gulag? Yeah, the gulag. I like how gulag. Yeah, gulag. We'll send you to the gulag. Uh, let's go into the garden and talk about some of the stuff. So, yeah, Sikhs came down to the park. Um, one of our Sikh brothers, um, so, you know, they spoke about me and stuff like that. And I appreciate my Sikh brother was uh, quite objective and not too harsh. I think he, he kind of summed up um, myself and pretty, pretty well, actually. Um, I don't agree with his stance on when he said that, oh, Tommy Robinson's fans are racist. Um, I don't believe that. There are obviously uh, probably a few of them that gravitate towards him that are racist and there's no doubt about that. But my issue is when you start calling someone racist, uh, the real racist will kind of go towards them. And, uh, you know, I think that's what's happening with Tommy Robinson. You keep on calling him racist, racist, racist. But, you know, um, it will go. The other thing, there was a Muslim guy there. I've forgotten his name with the, the sunglasses. And he, you know, he pretty much lied about me. He was saying that when I go to Speaker's Corner, that I just start kind of like, slights, kind of like insulting people. Um, that's not what happens. I go, I'm, I'm at Speaker's Corner from, uh, like, say, 12 o'clock until sometimes 1 o'clock in the morning in terms of, I'll go with some of the guys and we go to McDonald's and stuff and we'll sit down. But at Speaker's Corner until like 10 in the evening. And uh, if I was going around insulting everyone all the time, I'm sure that, you know, I would have been ejected from the park. And I don't do that. I have conversations with people. The ones that I recorded, obviously, can get a little bit heated. Um, one of the things I want to talk about um, is, a, a t sorry if I didn't mention your name, but someone sent me a message via Twitter about how the left, um, you know, is, is kind of more racist than the, 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 than the right, in the sense... And what I'm going to try and explain is um, the racism of the left. And remember, I'm on the left in the sense of uh, uh, economics and government. I do actually, oh, here he is again, look, ruining my solitude. Look at that. How dare they? Look, another one. Two people now, are totally ruined. I would have had 10 days with no human contact. <laughs> but it's uh, ruined. No, no, they're good guys though, so I'll, I'll, let them, I'll let them go. So the thing is that, you know, I'm going to talk about the bigotry of the left. Because one of the things I find very, very annoying is um, how the left calls everyone else racist on the right, but cannot see their own racism within themselves. And when I say racism, and I'm not talking about outright kind of like, you know, Nazi racism or stuff like that. I'm talking about... Uh, something's called a bigotry of low expectations and what I find is that um, you have people remember, I'm, I'm, let me just uh, pre pre preface this because I keep saying preface it's preface that uh, this will actually be on uh, hey dude this will be on Raj Speaker's Corner on YouTube so watch it I will do yeah so the thing is that uh, uh, it's, I'm talking about uh, the left yeah I'm you know the left and how they're kind of more racist than the right uh, so I'm just kind of trying to give an overview. Uh, and so with the left, I'm, I'm, in terms of my politics, I'm actually on the left um, in terms of economics. 
and government. Uh, I believe, believe that you know the NHS is a beautiful thing, and some things should be privatised. I mean, made uh, should be controlled by the government. And so, economically and uh, in terms of government, I'm I'm more for big big government, and I'm uh, more on the left on that side. Um, not so left like Corbyn, that lunatic. So, which is why I can't vote for him because he's pretty much a communist. And uh, so, with the with the left, what they have is a bigotry of low expectations. So what they'll do is uh, they'll have a criteria of what is right and wrong on themselves. So they'll say, okay, I'm a, a white, middle class, English person, and this is right and wrong. So we will not accept, say, uh, topping of a thief's hand. We think that's abhorrent, so we won't do that. But if another culture does this, then, oh, it's fine. It's fine, let them do it. But their own morality is, t it t they know it's wrong. So I'm just using that as an example because that is one of the things that I find quite annoying because what they're trying to say is that um, the, these people that are doing it don't know any better. They're just uh, not intelligent enough to know any better. So they're savages in a way. And so they're more racist in that sense that they cannot... Um, their own ideals, they don't put them on anyone else's because they don't think they're capable of doing it. And that's racist in itself. And I also find them very patronizing, you know. Uh, I've had conversations with some people on the left and they're like, Oh, the, the white man is using you. Tommy Robinson is using you. Uh, you're being manipulated like a token thingy. Could you not think that maybe I have my own intellect and that I am actually thinking for myself? and that uh, I have made that decision for myself or do you think I'm so easily manipulated and uh, so um, so gullible and so the white man is so powerful that he can manipulate me no he can't when I make a decision I do that decision on my own and I make an informed decision whether it's right or wrong is not the point the point is I've made the decision no one's manipulated me so you're more uh, racist than uh, saying the right. So, you know, I think we need to really kind of like understand this kind of like double standards that people, let's have a look, here he is again doing the thing here. Double standards of, uh, you know, of the left that, you know, I had an incident when I did the uh, Tommy Robinson uh, promo video and I met three uh, white middle class uh, people like hippie hipsters whatever they are and they were uh, I had to wait for Tommy Robinson for like 30 minutes to do the shoot and um, uh, they started to uh, talk and I just said the word oh no, Muslim no. grooming gang and they went absolutely ape shit I swear to god the guy was in my face there was remember these are three white people and they were calling me a racist like me and so I was like whoa it's like imagine what somebody who's a white person must go through if I'm being called that yeah so you know this bigotry of low expectations from the left is very patronizing um, anyone that doesn't think within a group uh, is automatically an Uncle Tom and a sellout and a traitor um, if people people are always thinking within group think this is when the world goes to shit because the thing is that you need dissenters, whether you agree with um, their political views or not. If everyone is just have a uniform view of just thinking the same, or just because that person is either the same colour as them or the same religion as them, then the world's going to go to shit. You know, you need people like myself, whether you agree with me or not, to be able to think freely. Now. I have these stupid videos out there now. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over it anyway. And comments all over the place. I'll leave Raj alone. Leave Raj alone. He's on the autistic spectrum. He's mentally ill. He doesn't know what he's doing. Shut up. Shut up, you idiots. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm more mentally capable of you than you than you can ever be. Yeah. And it's very insulting uh, because you're not just insulting me. You're insulting other people on the autistic spectrum who have views. So you're saying to us any of our views that go against you is because we are not thinking straight now if we were agreeing with you you'd be like oh great he's perfectly fine and so that yeah i know is going to be used against me a lot at speaker's corner 
which is one of the reasons why I didn't disclose it in the beginning. Because the guy called Mo Sam from Dawa Digital did just that. As soon as well, I told him by accident, and then when I had a conversation with him, that's what he did. He used it and said, look, your brain isn't functioning properly. And I was like, whoa. And so I didn't tell anyone, only a few select people that I got on with. And uh, I know that's going to happen again. We're going to have a situation where people are going to uh, secretly go, well, let Raj, uh, he's just saying that he doesn't understand. And they'll kind of try and uh, use kind of, uh, let's just say, uh, <laughs> this kind of like uh, uh, kind of propaganda to kind of like belittle me and make me feel like uh, make everyone think I'm not uh, sound in my mind to think and I'm going to really 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 expose that so the people that are going to start doing it uh, just be ready um, I'll expose you hard for your bigotry because us people on the autistic spectrum are not little wallflowers yeah we may think slightly different than everyone else and to be honest to you I think it's one of our greatest strengths as uh, people on the autistic spectrum is the ability to be able to um, think outside the box and not be swayed by public opinion so you know other people will be uh, concerned about social norms and not going outside the group I've never been part of a group so going out of it doesn't really bother me so even when you know the other day just on Sunday all these Sikhs come down and all that kind of stuff and I love my Sikh brothers I know I said I hate everyone I, I love the Sikh faith but I don't get on with a lot of Sikhs that's, that's just a plain fact simple that doesn't mean that Sikhism is wrong Sikhism is beautiful and anyone that practices it properly like by by Jagrag Singh yeah when you meet him you can feel the feel the amazing nature of uh, Sikhi if it's uh, practiced properly but a lot of people don't practice it properly and so um, yeah I just want to say that you know in terms of the, 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 the bigotry of low expectation on the left I just want them to kind of some of them some of them people on the left they do come from a good place like my uh, nephew was going down that route and I freaking red pilled that guy hard he's 25 now but the amount of discussions we had I mean if you heard us you would have thought we was fighting each other but I had to deprogram him from the the mass kind of indoctrination of the, the, the kind of colleges and the universities and the schools. And he's in the middle ground now. He still doesn't agree with everything I say. But he understands that, you know, things are much more nuanced than um, what the media is kind of like portraying. And look at him jumping. See, look how beautiful dogs are. And you don't like dogs. Look. How beautiful dogs are. What are you doing, Gucci? Yeah, so they're the main stars of the show anyway. So, like I said, um, I'm going to talk more about the... Hey, stop fighting, you two. Look, you're scaring him. I'm going to talk more about the, um, the racism on the left and uh, give examples um, at a later stage. And I will also talk more about... Um, this situation of where people are belittling people for mental illness as well you know I've been open about the fact that I suffer from depression and now people are using that oh he's depressed and he's mentally ill and then add the mixture of autism in there they're like oh he's basically incapable now of a rational thought no 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 let me tell you something now this moment in time in, in this moment in my life I am more in control more totally sober this is why I think people really, really hate me. They cannot uh, understand that, you know, I am somebody that is totally in control of my own mind and my own faculties and deciding for myself without no outside influence what I feel is right and wrong. And this is why you're not going to be able to stop me. And uh, to any Sikh brothers or anyone out there, don't, don't believe some of the stuff you hear about me. Um, talk to me first. Have a conversation and then decide for yourself. You think what you uh, what you heard about me, what you think about me, your preconceived ideas is reality. Because most people that speak to me on a one-to-one -one level outside of speakers corner are pretty surprised about um, what I'm like. One thing I want to try and do is to speak more like this. Um, this is my normal kind of, uh, let's just say, behavior in terms of outside the park. The problem is when I'm in the park, I'm, I'm constantly being berated all the time. I mean, I'm talking about like literally like non-stop. And any human being uh, will start to kind of 
look at these two they look like they're gonna go mad any human being starts to kind of like feel the uh not the pressure but the kind of like erosion of your kind of uh patience and so by the time i sometimes hit a particular stage i can lose my patience and i'm not only human what i need to try and really do is control my uh, conversations and to uh, try to zone out of all this uh, stuff uh, and try and articulate myself in this way because I think, you know, this is more productive. I'm not using so many loaded words because this is my normal kind of, uh, what I call my normal kind of conversational style. Uh, when I'm going to Speaker's Corner, I'm much more confrontational. So, yeah, I've had a couple of messages, people saying, look, if you spoke like this, we would listen to you more. And yeah, I agree. I agree with you totally. But I, I think I need people to understand that uh, when I'm in these kind of situations where I'm being surrounded and belittled and mocked, it is very difficult to keep your um, keep your calm. And uh, I'm going to try my best. Uh, my, my my main thing now is to really kind of recalibrate my vocabulary so it's uh, not so loaded. And so I can kind of get my message across much more, so it's much more palatable uh, rather than the way I do it, which is very hard, uh, like, you know, right, kind of like a, a sledgehammer. And I need to start using like a nutcracker. Uh, that way I can get through to people more. Anyway, uh, stop it, bullet. Stop it. Stop that. Anyway, um, we'll uh, go inside and then we'll... Kind of like say bye. They're going now, actually. Thank God. So I can. Uh, no, no offense, dudes. They're gonna watch the video. I do like they've been here for like three hours. I'm kind of sick and tired of it now. No offense. Uh, they're going now, and I can just chill out. Uh, still got like three days. Uh, I'm glad I had a week though, at least uh, a week. And then uh, we'll uh, just uh... anyway say bye to this guy. We'll be up there, he's going to watch it as well, write a comment. See you he's later. a good dude, man, good dude. If anyone was going to ruin my solitude, I'd like it to be guys <laughs> like this, so uh, I'll, I'll put up with it. Bye-bye. Uh, I'm going to put it up now. I've been 